So, knee osteoarthritis, one of the most common conditions we see in practice. Let's take you through some anatomy about what it is and the key ways in which we treat it. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So to show you what knee osteoarthritis is all about, let's dive in to our anatomy model. So first, let me orientate you to the different parts of the knee. So the knee joint is made up of the femur, also known as the thigh bone, the patella, or the kneecap, and the tibia, the big bone at the front of your shin. So the main part of the knee joint is made up of what we call the tibiofemoral joint, the joint between the tibia and the femur. Now, this is also split into two. We have the medial tibiofemoral compartment. This is the inside of the knee closest to our midline and the lateral tibiofemoral compartment. Now, we can also see where the patella or the kneecap joins on or uh, articulates with the femur to create the patellofemoral joint, the joint between the patella and the femur. Now, all of these different surfaces are lined with a special cartilage which is called hyaline or articular cartilage. Now, this is a, a, a shiny surface which almost allows us to form a protective layer over the top of our bones and it covers all the key areas of the joint as we've mentioned. So first of all we can see how it's lined along the femur or the thigh bone as a part of the knee joint as well as the tibia as we can see here as well as the patella or the back of it, which articulates with the femur for that patellofemoral joint. So the other really key soft tissue structure I want to introduce you to here are the menisci of the knee. Now, if we look at the knee from a top-down view, and this is looking directly at the tibia or the shin bone, we can see that we have two half-crescent-shaped structures of the knee which are the menisci. We have one on the medial or inside and one on the lateral or outside. Now these are in addition to the hyaline cartilage which we mentioned earlier which sit underneath them so we have extra cushioning when it comes to the knee joint. Now the key role of the menisci here is to provide that cushioned layer for general movement when we're moving the knee, so really important there. But also crucially, it allows for an element of joint space. It provides an element of gapping between the femur and the tibia so that there is no direct contact between the two. So that is really important as well. So if we talk about those components together, the hyaline cartilage that lines the surfaces of the bones and the menisci, they both form a crucial part of the knee joint because it allows for that cushioning and that protective layer over the bones. Now, over time, as a natural part of the aging process, that hyaline cartilage starts to break down and the menisci get thinner over time. And we can see this on x-rays when we see that the space between the femur and the tibia starts to narrow as someone gets older. Now, these are natural processes. It happens to all of us, but sometimes it can happen at a rate or in a way that provides symptoms to our patient, either in terms of pain, in terms of stiffness or reduced range of movement. And that is what happens with osteoarthritis at the knee. So that's the anatomy and what knee osteoarthritis is. How do we treat it in practice? Well, the good news, Contrary to popular belief in our society, not everyone who has knee osteoarthritis is going to need surgery. There's plenty of patients who manage absolutely fine with simple physiotherapy management. And in fact, some of the key physiotherapy management strategies are the most simple ones. So, for example, just ensuring that the patient has the chance to go and visit their GP or local doctor to talk about routine painkillers. These can be really effective for just making sure that the intensity of the patient's symptoms is reduced on a day-to-day -day basis. Then we talk about pacing, modifying activities or perhaps modifying the intensity of a patient's activities so that they don't aggravate their symptoms as much. So, 
Simple things, if we find that the patient is really struggling to walk half an hour, well, perhaps we just need to think about walking for 20 minutes at this stage, making sure that we don't over aggravate those symptoms. And then over time, we can gradually build that back up. Next, footwear. It makes sense that using comfortable shoes that have a nice supportive cushioning will make a difference compared to really flat shoes, which offer our foot and our knee not much support at all. And then another really important component, which is difficult to talk about, but really vital, is weight loss. It's a known evidence-based fact that for patients who are overweight or obese, who have knee osteoarthritis, losing weight can have a significant impact on their likelihood or risk of needing knee surgery in the future. And then on to exercise, a key focus for physiotherapists for any condition, but absolutely so for osteoarthritis of the knee. So what does the evidence say? Well, I'd like to show you a paper from Franzen et al. from 2015. Now, this is a Cochrane review. It's one of the highest levels of evidence that we have. And if I can read you a couple of the key statements that they took from their findings about evidence. First of all, High quality evidence indicates that land-based therapeutic exercise provides short-term benefit in terms of reduced knee pain OA and more evidence shows that it has an improvement in physical function as well. So therefore, what type of exercises should we consider? Well, amazingly and really simply, pretty much anything. Their findings, as I'll read it to you, include any land-based non-perioperative therapeutic exercise regimens aimed at relieving the symptoms of OA, regardless of content, duration, frequency, and intensity. Now, to break that down in a really simple format, they basically say any land-based exercise of any content, duration, frequency, or intensity can be really useful. So, as a result, the good news is that for patients, there's so many different options that they can use for their knee OA. It could be something as simple as cycling, as swimming, or something like using a cross trainer instead of a treadmill if they find it more comfortable. But then we also have individual exercises which can be useful too. So I think one of the key things I find myself saying to my patients is asking, what motivates you? What are you more likely to continue with? What is going to mean something to you? Is it something that you do with your friends, with your family, that actually adds to your social life as well? Therefore, the great news, patients can do a wide variety of things. But if you're looking for some specific exercises that I commonly give my patients, here they are coming up. So there's no doubt a really key component of knee OA is quad strengthening. And therefore, something like some simple straight leg raises, as you can see here, where our patient is lying supine, squeezing their thigh muscles and slowly lifting their leg up and down. Then we have some simple chair based exercises. This could be an inner range quads movement or a leg extension movement, as you can see here, where our patient is simply lifting up their foot, slowly controlling with their quad muscles and slowly coming down. And then I like to add an element of weight bearing component as well. So we can really do things with sit to stands. Now we could include a staggered sit to stand where our patient puts their more irritated leg forward and then stands up and slowly sits down. And as they get better, we can move that irritated leg back a little bit towards the center so that there's equal weight going through each leg. So how often should we be doing these? Well, there's a brilliant paper by Husted et al, 2022, that I absolutely love, really interesting. They took patients and either asked them to do quads-based exercises twice a week, four times a week, or six times a week to see the impact on their strength and their symptoms for patients who had knee osteoarthritis. What were the results? Well, they actually found that the twice a week group had just as much strength gains as the six times a week group, but had 
better symptom management. They seem to be less painful than the six times a week group. Some really interesting things to come out of this. And I've done a full video if you're interested in this, which you can find the link below, which goes through why this might be the case. So if you've enjoyed this video, smash that like button, subscribe to our channel. And of course, you can find loads more from us on our Instagram at Clinical Physio or our website, clinicalphysio.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Khalid. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.